If you want to know if your API, let's say amlodipine, is safe to use for the production of medicine, you should simply check if your lab results meet all the specifications from the amlodipine monograph. You can find this monograph in a pharmacopoe, like the European pharmacopoe. If the results are fine, your API should be safe to use. So, if pharmacopoe organizations like these are seen as a reference source and can decide for the entire pharma industry whether an API can be approved or not, we can conclude that they are pretty important. And that made me wonder, who is publishing the European pharmacopoe? How large and profitable is this organization? And who provides the essential information for the monographs? And who is revising their work? We've dived deeper into it and we'll discuss it in this video. But let's start with defining what's a pharmacopoe for the ones who aren't working in this pharma world. A pharmacopoe book contains all relevant information for producing high quality drugs. We can even say it's the Bible of the pharmaceutical industry. The European pharmacopoe is crucial as a reference point to create any kind of medicine. It contains a compilation of monographs, and there is a monograph for nearly all APIs that defines the quality standards. The monograph specifications for that API and your lab results will be shown on a certificate of analysis, also known as COA. Quite relevant, and that's also the reason why all buyers on our platform usually ask for a COA. But let's go back to the years just after the Second World War when a new trend of internationally harmonized pharmacopoeis emerged. Groups of countries began working together to replace their national pharmacopoeia with common ones, like the European pharmacopoeia. Eight members of the European Union created the European pharmacopoeia in 1964. And it didn't take long before it started to grow, with more countries joining in over time. And today it consists of over 36 countries. The EDQM is the organization that publishes the European Pharmacopoe. It houses the European Pharmacopoe Commission, which is responsible for reviewing and approving all the monographs. Nowadays, EDQM is located in Strasbourg, a French city close to the border of Germany. A commission meets three times a year to discuss and implement texts proposed by selected groups of experts. These experts work in, uh, working in academia or in the private sector also revise the text to ensure everything is correct. It is published in English and or French. And if you want to be the proud owner of a pharmacopoe, you can get an average hardcover copy for around 540 euros, but prices differ for online versions. But does the revenue coming from these book cover all costs? No. The EDKM is actually a directorate of the Council of Europe, and the budget of the Council of Europe in 2022 was 477 million euros, mainly funded by member states' contributions. So this is the structure, but does each one of these 36 countries work similarly? Do they all use the same European pharmacopoe? No. A regional approach is used in Europe. For instance, some of the 36 member states, such as Finland or Sweden, have decided to stop producing their own national pharmacopoeia and use only the European versions. However, some of the other member states have decided to mix things up and continue their national pharmacopoeia alongside the European pharmacopoeia. In France, for instance, the pharmacopoeia consists of the text of the European and French pharmacopoeia. This is it for the European Pharmacopoeia. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao.